Hi, my name is Alex with Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about the cumulative report in Jira. This is an interesting, colorful report. I'm sure you've seen it. You've probably been confused by it, and I'm going to give you my insight. I've been using this report for many years, and I'm going to give you some tips, some tricks, and some general guidance on how to read and use this report so that you as a Scrum Master can effectively guide your team to success. This is a very powerful report, and I really, really do recommend that you use it. I don't think it gets a lot of love, so we're going to try to hype it up today and hopefully give you some information that will change your life. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I am really trying to hit 3,000 subscribers here before the end of the year, so every subscriber counts. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, 80% plus of you haven't subscribed, please make sure you hit that red button. It helps out the channel tremendously, and if you find value out of this video, make sure to always give it a thumbs up. And finally, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into today's video. And let me talk to you about this cumulative flow because I love this. I first got exposed to this chart, I don't know, maybe three, four years ago now. And it wasn't in Jira. It was outside. We're actually recreating this chart naively enough. But this is one of my favorite ones because this does tell you something very, very important. And and so the thing about Agile that I think a lot of people don't understand or, or sometimes get confused about is software's never really completed. It's kind of like a research project. Sure, you can set up schedules and budgets and stuff like that. But in a true essence, like when has Google ever been done with Google.com, right? Like it's the functionality is still the same, but Google is always expanding and building on it, right? Think of any like software like Netflix, right? Or uh, iOS is right. Like it's always evolving. You only have pseudo stop and end games, right? Software is very much an infinite game. And so what happens when, when you're dealing with an infinite game that is like software, it's hard to digest like as a project manager or as a scrum master or even like, um, like an executive because we're taught that life is a finite game. There's always a clear winner and a clear loser. Unless you're playing soccer, which I always never understood how you can end the game and be tied. Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me, right? But... Most games that we play competitively, there's a clear winner and a clear loser. And I think we carry that mentality over to our projects, specifically our software projects. And we expect that there's a clear finish line where we're either going to win or six or fail in that delivery. But what's important to understand is that, again, if you're if you're looking at a long living project, which again most software projects are, you might encounter a situation or a phenomenon where you don't have a finish line. Okay where you kind of keep going for a little bit and, and it almost seems like an eternity, but you'll kind of, that schedule keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed, right? And so where this chart comes into a lot of value, in my opinion, is that it will give you a representation of the trend. You can set the times here, right? So you can actually define different times, but all this, all this chart is doing it is showing you statuses. And while that could be very subtle, it's actually very valuable if you know what you're looking for here. And so ultimately what you're seeing here is you want to see the trends of your teams to see how they're performing relative to the current objective. And what I mean by that is there can be a situation where if you look at the, uh, the little rubric here, right? So the orange represents our to-do work. This teal looking color represents design and work. This purple means dev and work. And then the green means done. And so what I would expect over time is for the orange to get smaller, the teal and the purple to be pretty consistent, right? It's because if we're if our teams are always delivering their same amount of value, these two colors should be pretty consistent because they shouldn't. One day we our team shouldn't have like fifty things in design, and one day the team shouldn't have like a hundred things in dev and progress, right? Like these should be pretty consistent throughout the life. And if they're not, if all of a sudden you're seeing these, this happen to those in progress statuses, then that's a red flag, right? Because now you're seeing that there's a bottleneck because the the team should be pretty consistent in those middle in progress ones that to do should shrink over time but if you see it growing if you see it getting bigger that means somehow your team's making up more scope and so if that's blindsiding siding you then that's a problem that you should go get addressed because to do your scope should for the most part be pretty locked unless again you're playing this infinite game in which case you still don't want to see giant spikes, right? Because that can be like a whole new project and stuff like that. And so you want to watch for, for big giant spikes. But for the most part, your to-do should stay somewhat 
consistent doing kind of this where you finish work, you, you introduce new work, you close some work, you introduce new work, right? You should be following that kind of a pattern. And you're done, should be doing something very similar. Well, done shouldn't go down, but done should always be in an upward trend. Your team should always be closing work. And so ultimately what you want is the green, the done work, to absorb and consume all the other colors. That's when you know you're done. But again, if you're playing kind of an infinite game, you want to see your green over time, whatever length of that project is, you want to see it go up. Eventually, hopefully someday it'll close, but you should at least see those trends and you can, that this thing will paint that picture of what's going on. Right. And so again, this, this graph, I really, really like for that reason, because it, it does tell you a lot of this information that maybe sometimes you don't even know was valuable and you didn't even know existed. And so hopefully this kind of paints a, a better picture for what a cumulative flow diagram is and how you uh, use it because it's super valuable in my opinion. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please make sure you're subscribed. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, just hit that red button. It's super easy, super free, no effort to you. And it helps out the channel tremendously. We're trying to hit 3000 subscribers here. So please, please, please make sure you hit that subscribe button right now if you haven't done it already. And if you did get value out of this video that you just watched, make sure you drop a like because that helps out the algorithm tremendously. It helps Jira be known to more people and it just helps more people watch these videos. So make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if you just want to say hi and interact in the comment section, feel free to leave a comment. I do read and respond to every single comment. So if you have any questions, anything that you want to just discuss, or even if you just want to say hello to help out that algorithm, um, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.